So we're on day 11, halfway through the book of John. And by now, I'm guessing, you probably forgot you raised your hand in church committing to this study. So now we need to re-engage. I need to encourage you to keep going. Don't give up. I know the newness is worn off. You're getting tired in the mornings and at night. But please, please, please keep to your challenge. When I study God's Word, um, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to be transparent with you. We have to sort of put ourselves in the story. So when we were raising our children, my husband's a family pastor here, so my heart is for families. And when we were raising our kids, devotions were a huge part of our lives. I remember we had all pile on the bed and we'd say, what verse are we reading tonight? You know, we didn't read um, John chapter 11, 57 verses, because the kids just can't handle that much. Actually, adults can't handle that much unless we just really work at it, right? Are we being transparent? Is that the way it is at your house? 57 verses seems like, is this chapter ever gonna end? Well, so we decided let's not make it boring for our children. Let's not make it boring for our teenagers. How in the world can we make God's word alive to our whole family so that dad gets something, mom gets something, teenager gets something, three-year-old gets something. And so that was very important to us as a family. And was it a challenge? Yes. Were we perfect at it? No, but we sure did try. So I always encourage everyone, if 57 verses is too long for you, you know, we can read it to you. There's Bible apps. There are many, many places that you can get summaries. But truthfully, if we get something out of God's Word, one nugget for the day, that is going to help us through. So don't look at it as a big task. Just look at it and say, what can I get out of this chapter that can influence me today? And John chapter 11 is amazing. I know you know the story. It's Lazarus. He rose from the grave, right? He was dead. And, you know, we've been learning this story since we were in Sunday school. I remember my mom and dad didn't go to church. And at four years old, the bus come up our street, up a big holler in West Virginia, and they picked me up for Sunday school. And I remember learning as a four-year-old little girl all about Lazarus. So I kind of got nervous about doing this Bible study because this is kind of out of my comfort zone. And I thought, you know, Lord, I have learned about Lazarus my entire life. It's almost as if we just overlook him and overlook the power that God used in Lazarus' life in Martha's life and Mary's life and that whole town's life. It was just powerful. It impacted the whole community what happened to Lazarus. So as we read through the story and we're with our families, let's focus on them a little bit. Maybe you could do a narrative back and forth. Let one of your little girls be Martha and one be Mary and then, you know, dad be Jesus and we just narrate through. That makes it so exciting for kids. Oh, and they follow along and you help them. And remember, when we get to a word we don't understand, if we're little and if we're an adult, that will keep us from comprehending what God wants us. So take time to stop, pull out the dictionary, Google the word, and figure out what it means so that you can keep comprehending it. Like furlong. I don't even know what a furlong is. I have to look it up. I looked it up just now. It's almost two miles. So your kids don't know what that is. So it just turns into, you know, what they don't understand if you don't take time to explain it to them. Also, too, we recognize in our Bible study that we did five senses at our house, right? So John chapter 11, we all know Lazarus, so I'm just trying to point out some basic things. Let's talk about sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. I remember one time when we was talking about taste, my daughter Allie, she was just in elementary school, she said, how do we taste God's Word? And then immediately the dog jumps on the bed and he starts licking the Bible and my daughter Allie said, is it good, Snickers? Old taste and see, was it good? And yes, God's word is good to us. We can touch it when we go to bed at night. I remember many, many times during dark valleys in John chapter 11 where Lazarus, they're going through a dark storm and dark storms in my life. I would take God's word and I'd say, God, I'm gonna hug you because this is what matters to me. This is what's helping me get through. And as Mary and Martha are struggling through what they're gonna get through, teach your children that yes, you're gonna have hard times. And yes, death comes to your family. And yes, difficult times come to your family. But you can touch the very words of God to help you comfort you. 
and be, and that's what they were waiting on, weren't they? When they went to look for him, he wasn't there. They called for him and he wasn't there. And all of a sudden they're saying he's not coming. But the, all they wanted was the master's touch. So when we look through our Bible, we've got touch taken care of because we can touch God's word. They were waiting on the master's touch in Lazarus' life. We can talk about taste. They wanted to taste his words and we get to taste his words every single day. They're pleasant to us, they're helpful to us, they feed us. And then they were talking about sight. All they wanted to do was get their eyes on Jesus. That's all they wanted to do. And teach your children that maybe we're waiting on Jesus and we don't actually get to see him, but he is moving in our lives, whether we are waiting on him or whether we, he has answered our prayers. So teach them that way. Let's just do all the five senses. And the next thing we, we want to teach them is to hear God's Word. We can't just be doers of it, right? We have to be hearers of it. Mary and Martha were waiting for Jesus to come to town to heal their brother. That didn't come. So they thought, well, it's just hopeless. But the Master did come to town. He did speak the words. And most preachers will say, he didn't say, Laz um, somebody, he didn't say just come forth. He said, Lazarus come forth or everybody would come out of the grave. So he was specifically waiting to hear his name. And God teaches us all through John chapter 11 that he's gonna be personal to us. He shows us how human he is, even though he's the God man. He shows compassion. He shows us in the shortest verse of the Bible, remember we could teach that to our kids because they love that, because they say, well, what verse have you memorized? And we say, I know one, I know one. Jesus wept in John 11, 35. And he showed us how he had compassion for us. He felt our infirmities as they talk about in the Bible. He is with us all the time. No matter if he, we think he's late, he's still working. He's still working. We have to keep remembering that. And then as we go through the rest of the senses, we've got sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. Let's go ahead and incorporate something fun. Let's, let's um, do role playing. You know, let one of them be Lazarus. You know, Put them in a sheet and um, wrap them up like a mummy and let them come forth out of the grave. Build a fort, you know, with your kids. And I know teenagers act like they're gonna roll their eyes at you, but they really do have a good time too if you get them going with it and make a part of it. And it always is something they can remember about the Bible story. And yes, that Bible story is gonna come to life for them one day as well. So role play, do some narratives, do some um, mummy wraps and forts and teach them that God's Word can come alive in their lives just like they, it can come alive in adults' lives. And I do think that the most important verse as we want to talk about the theme of John chapter 11 is, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And doesn't that teach us that by God's amazing grace, when we trust in Him, that He takes our dead lives, He takes our mundane lives, He takes our lives where we're headed for hell, and He gives us life eternal. And we have resurrection power in Him. You know, it says in the, the um, verses that they doubted Him, and they didn't believe He could do it, and He wouldn't believe He would come. And then Jesus said, I was gonna hesitate, I'm paraphrasing, because he wanted to show the glory of God. So maybe if you're waiting for resurrection power in your life, maybe God's just saying, hold on just a little bit longer because I'm gonna show my glory through you and through your circumstance. This is a wonderful chapter. I hope you have fun with it in your homes. I have, hope you're challenged by it. And I hope you always remember that no matter what you're going through, your life is here to please the Lord and to glorify Him. Have a wonderful day. I'm so glad we got to be a part of this today. Thank you.